Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, perhaps you've noticed that each show, our Friday's parakeet, Johannes, helps us to open the show. Well, we'd, we'd really like to continue this tradition, but we had this little problem. As you know, birds eat seeds, right? And, uh, well, Johannes is this really finicky eater. The only seeds he'll eat are marijuana seeds. No, listen. Hey, he's not addicted. He's definitely not addicted, but... I mean, God, we've run out of all our seeds. I mean, and we really need your help. If you have any seeds, I mean, you only throw them out, right? Could you please send them to help keep Johannes alive? That's help Brandon, keep you. Hmm? Brandon, Brandon, we yeah? cannot solicit or in any way encourage the use of illegal drugs on television. Now, introduce the first sketch. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, it's the okay. law, Brandon. Okay, now, okay. Introduce the first sketch. I, I understand, John. Okay, definitely. Don't send your seeds to. The first That's help keep sketch, Brandon. God. Okay, here's the first sketch. And hello and welcome to public debate night at Pepper Lane University. This evening, a controversial topic, should prostitution be legalized? And our guest debaters are, on the affirmative side, a self-admitted prostitute from Prostitutes United, Ms. Barbara St. Pierre. And taking the negative point of view, a fine debater from the Society for the Prevention of Streetwalking, Pastor James Babbitt. <laughs> May we hear your opening remarks, Pastor? Oh, no, 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 no. I relinquish the floor to the lady first. <laughs> fine. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit that if one consenting adult charges another consenting adult for sexual favors, it is a private matter, pure and simple. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Babbitt. You know, in today's modern world, you hear about all kinds of crazy things. Slow dancing, Brandy Alexanders, plunging necklines and legalizing prostitution. <laughs> I'm here to say that if the Lord had intended sexual partners to exchange money, he'd have grown the dollar bills on their private. <laughs> An interesting viewpoint. Let the debate begin. Thank you. I maintain that prostitutes perform a valuable service satisfying the needs of men who might otherwise become a threat, acting out sexual fantasies rather than My holding dear Miss St. Pierre, I will not continue this debate unless you curb your filthy prosty language. <laughs> For heaven's sakes, sex is a fact of life. Men and I'm women... I'm not listening. Men and women have basic I'm desires... I'm not listening. ...that must be satisfied. Rock if you deny ages. this, then you, you bring about stress situations, right? And that is why we have formed Prostitutes United. Oh, you just feel that you should be able to walk down the street sailing your wares. Prosty for sale, prosty for sale. Okay, 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 now is the, now, thank you, is the time, now is the time when we open the floor to questions. Yes, the gentleman here in the front row. Uh, Pastor Babbitt, um, once I got involved with a prostitute. Oh, Lord, forgive you. <laughs> and uh, I realized I was doing the wrong thing. For you knew you had sinned. So I married her. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, please, play your childish pranks elsewhere. This is hardly the time or the place for you, ma'am. Next question, please. Yes, the gentleman here in the front row. Uh, Pastor, my wife left me last year and I've been thinking about going to a prostitute. How can I stop myself? Now, son, don't become alarmed. Just let me take a long, hard squint at this particular problem. Do you find in your day-to-day -day activities that your eyes seem to have a mind of their own wandering up and down the body of any innocent female that just happens to go by. 
Yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And do you find that there is a woman at your place of work that you just love to brush up against accidentally on purpose whenever you can? Well, not someone at work, but... And do you find yourself... Do you find yourself thinking about your mother and how she never gave you enough love. Oh, she had lots of time for other people. Oh, sure. But never for you. You were a bad boy. You weren't good enough for the name. Babbitt. My name's not Babbitt. Wandering, lonely, lost and alone. You find yourself in a bordello, listening to that jungle disco beat. At first, it, it just starts your toe to tapping. <laughs> but before you know it, your hips are swinging to and fro. And you can hear the native drums beating like the pounding of your heart. And then you see her, Karina, the fiery Latin temptress from the last room down the hall. Her hair's as black as your soul, and her lips are red, red, red. Well, well, and she sashes up to you and just she about says, up. You're a bad boy, and you say, Spank me, mama! <laughs> and you know, there is no doubt that you'll be back again and again and again. And then you find yourself in a debate. Standing across from a woman with a backside built like a brick outhouse and the morals of a rabbit. But you want her. Oh, we share it. You want her so bad you can hardly breathe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and you know you can tell by the way she looks at you. She wants dumping. you bad. Thank and you. all you can think about is, will I be better than all the others? Yes. Yes, you want to frolic in her boudoir. You want to let her know you're a bad boy. And then she can say, Is, is there a back exit out of here? Mama! Yeah! <laughs> Coming up next on the Friday edition, an exclusive interview with President Jimmy Carter. This is the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. Good evening, I'm Melanie Chardoff, and tonight most of our segment will be taken up with an exclusive interview with President Carter. But first, these stories. President Carter said yesterday that if Edward Kennedy does not drop out of the presidential race, he will adopt tough new measures against the Massachusetts senator, including economic sanctions and a possible naval blockade of Hyannisport. <laughs> Carter said that if these measures didn't work, he would ignore the senator, hoping that like the hostages in Iran, the American people might forget about him, too. <laughs> The Statue of Liberty, for the first time in its 94-year history, exploded this week. No less than five terrorist groups immediately took credit for the explosion. Four of the groups said that their motive was to protest the oppression of minority groups in the United States, and the fifth group said that they bombed the statue because the souvenirs, souvenirs there were a jip. <laughs> Dick Gregory, comedian and political activist, has ended his three-month-long fast after turning into a gaseous substance. <laughs> Gregory is no longer officially classified as solid matter, but he will still be required to pay his income taxes. Uh, Friday edition this evening is proud to have been granted an exclusive interview with the president. We take you now to the Rose Garden of the White House for an interview with President Jimmy Carter. Mr. President, this is Melanie Chardoff. Welcome to the Friday edition. Well, thank you, Melanie. I'm happy and filled with love to be with you. Don't the, don't the Red Royals look beautiful this year? Oh, yes, they're yes, lovely, I Mr. Love President. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. First, let me congratulate you. Yeah, go ahead. I want to congratulate you on apparently locking up the Democratic nomination. Well, thank you, Melanie. But of course, my most immediate concern is to gain the release of a group of Americans being held by a crazed fanatic. Ah, that's right. Of course, you're referring to the 53 American hostages. No, the 855 Kennedy delegates. What are you talking uh, about? You just met with Senator Kennedy yesterday. Can you sum up that meeting for us? Well, certainly, Melanie. I told him that if he continued to challenge me 
it would cause a split in the Democratic Party. I assured him that I'm totally capable of doing that all by myself. I see. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, yes. are you planning to keep Walter Mondale as your running mate? Who? <laughs> well, uh, what about Hamilton Jordan? You must have been greatly relieved when he was cleared of his cocaine charges. Well, Melanie, there was never any doubt in my mind. Uh, I do not associate with people who use cocaine, marijuana, or drugs of any kind. As a matter of fact, I was just saying that last night to my friend Greg Allman. He looks strange for you. His eyes were glassy. I don't know what it was. He was probably uh, sick or something. Perhaps, yes. That's okay. Go right ahead. <laughs> Mr. President, yes. turning to another issue now. Yeah. The polls show that your popularity has fallen to its lowest point since you were taking office. That's right. Now, to, to what do you attribute this? Well, I think you have to look at how the country has changed in the last four years. In 1976, I was elected president, and Farrah Fawcett was the most popular female star in the country. The American public was clearly looking for heroes with a lot of hair and big teeth. <laughs> then, in early 77, against my advice, Farrah left Charlie's Angels. Concurrently, my own popularity began to decline. Then Sunburn came out and did nothing at the box office, and my popularity went down again. I don't think it's much of a secret that I was counting very heavily on the success of her latest movie, Saturn Three. And when that went into the toilet, it darn near cost me the nomination. Uh, so you feel that your declining popularity is directly linked with Farrah Fawcett's career problems? I don't think there's any question about it. Um, she doesn't get a family into Fanny into gear, I'm going to be out of a job. A well, family too, for that matter. Uh, the whole bunch family, of them yes. got to get working. It's yeah. terrible. It cost me a lot of votes. I understand. Thank you very much. Yes. Well, Mr. President, I, yes. I'd like to thank you, and I, I guess now you'd like to get back to those roses, huh? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm working on a hybrid of my own devising. Ah. It's called a Jimmy. Do you like that? This is this one here. Lovely. Yes. Yes. Now, is that a perennial? Does it bloom yearly? Uh, no, it's an incumbent. It blooms, uh, it blooms for three years and hides underground on the fourth. Well, thank you Mr. President, thank, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Melanie. Thank Take you. care, sweetheart. a nice man. And finally, in the news, A.C. Nielsen, founder of the Nielsen Ratings, the system by which it is determined whether television shows succeed or fail, died this week in Chicago. We wanted to have a moment of silence on this broadcast for Mr. Nielsen, but if we did that, our ratings would go down, and we simply cannot risk that. So we simply say, A.C. Nielsen canceled at age 83. <laughs> I'm Melanie Chardoff. Have a pleasant weekend. This has been the Friday edition with your correspondent, Melanie Chardoff. Don't sit down, John. There's Jap snipers in the area. Yeah, who is it? Daddy Morrison, U.S. Census Bureau. You haven't sent in your questionnaire? Oh, for Pete's sake, this is my day off! I'm watching the sands of Hiroshima. Oh, can't even clean my guns. How do you do? John Wayne. He's dead. Yes. Great loss to the country. Yeah. Look, there's Forrest Tucker. He's crying. Crying like a baby. These was buddies. They'd kick the hell out of each other over a woman. But they was buddies. I thought this counting stuff was over with. You should have sent in your questionnaire. It's the law, you know. What do you mean? I never got a questionnaire. Oh, come on now. Everybody gets one in the mail. Not around here. <laughs> the kids in the trailer park, yeah. they go through the mailboxes looking for money. They don't want to get it on their own through working hard. They want to steal it. Well, isn't it a sign of the times? Yeah. 
Now, 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 let me see. Uh, what is your full name? George. George Bargate. Okay, Mr. Bargate. Sex? <laughs> well, I know that, don't I? Male. Yeah. <laughs> Race? American. Caucasian? What, are you blind? Of course I'm white. Got some black people living here in the trailer park. I didn't want to rent to them at first. Yeah. They being black and all. Yeah. But they're all right. Yeah, they're good people. They're clean people. They're the best tenants here in the park. Oh. Sam and Betty. Yeah, you wouldn't know they were black. Only through their skin, by their skin. <laughs> yeah. And they got a real nice trailer, too. Silverwood Supreme. Oh, I see. All right, now, Mr. Bargate, what is your marital status? I'm on my own. Ah. I used to be married. Oh, then you're divorced. Yeah, I'm divorced. Mm -hmm. She said I didn't have a heart. I bought her a nice four-bedroom house out there in Simi Valley. 2,800 square feet. The Barcelona model. All Spanish. They had red tile and black ironwork. It was real nice. I worked my butt off to keep that place up. And she said I didn't have a heart. Hi, George. Yeah, what is it, Sam? Well, it's those darn kids again. They put a bag of doggy poop on my front porch and they set it on fire. Oh, idle hands of the devil's workshop. Well, what do you want me to do about it, Sam? Hey, don't, don't bring it in here. I just told the lady you're clean. All right, Sam, all right, but uh, look, uh, you're the manager, so you better speak to those kids. They're gonna, they're gonna turn this trailer park into a ghetto or all something. All right, I will. I will, I'll get to it. All right, well, I appreciate that, George. Yeah. And oh, don't forget Tuesday night poker. Oh, yeah, I'll be here. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah, he's a, he's a credit to his race. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know why they do that, don't you? Hmm. Because he's black. Yeah. These kids. I ought to tie them up. Put them in the trunk of my car for a while. <laughs> That'll fix them. Well, now, I don't think that's going to solve anything, Mr. Pargy. Oh, don't start telling me about children and kids. I've been there and back. I raised two boys. Two boys, yeah. but they're not living here now with you, correct? No. Yeah, here's my youngest boy, Jimmy. Yeah, he's all right. He did everything I told him to do. And here's my other boy. <laughs> Bob. Look at that. He's a whole nother bag of beans. He's on drugs. Oh, now, now, come on. Please be kind. I mean, you can't tell a book by its cover. Ah, oh, you think this is something right here? It is. He's doing something constructive for the country. Demolitions. <laughs> you gotta know what you're doing there or you'll blow your whole body up. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound very constructive to me. What, Mr. you think Burke. that's constructive? Talking about the end of the world and space people. Well, you know, it's <laughs> it's probably just a phase he's going through. Now, we all go through phases. Well, I don't go through phases. Not me. I haven't changed my mind about anything in over 30 years. Well, it could, but you just let this boy watch too much of the TV. Oh, what are you talking about? Well, you know, it's a known fact that too much of the boob tube can warp a small child's brain. What? Uh -huh. I watch a lot of television and there's nothing wrong with me. You never can tell. I was reading in the Star the other day that the rays coming out of the color TV 
can actually make our babies impotent. Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. It's the communists. <laughs> They're the ones who are screwing up our children. We ought to go over there right now and drop a bomb on those Russians. We got the power. We got the hydrogen bomb. Let's use it. Then there'll be peace. <laughs> well, now, Mr. Bargate, you know, it's a known fact that the fallout from your hydrogen bomb, it can actually mutate our babies. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? We gotta fight for our children. Fight for our homes and our jobs and our nation. Fight! Fight! The whole world is going to pot! And nobody's doing a damn thing about it! Mr. Barton. We ought to kick the crap out of all these people who don't care about the world! Miss, they Miss shouldn't be allowed to eat! Yeah, well, I, 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 I see, Mr. Bargate. Uh, I'll tell you what I will do. Uh, I will leave the questionnaire here with you, if you promise to fill it out, and I'll be by, uh, oh, tomorrow around five? Hmm? And, uh, Mr. Bargate, I'm, I'm really sorry about John Wayne. Yeah, the problem with the people today is they never blew anybody up.
Channel 71 welcomes you once again to Matzoi, a self-defense program whose philosophy has applications in every area of life. Here now is your host, Rabbi Emanuel Kimmelman. Hello, and welcome once again to Matzoi. What can you do to prepare authentic matzo balls? How may we choose among the various recipes handed down through the ages and select one which best represents the authentic derivation of this little delicacy? Matsoi holds the answer. Through this rigid program of concentration and self-will, you too can defend the quality of your cuisine. Come with me now as Rabbi Isaiah Feinberg helps to illustrate the basic technique. Welcome, Rabbi Feinberg. Welcome. You appear to be in good health. Thank you. I feel well. In order to prepare our dish, Rabbi Feinberg will recite a list of the ingredients we will require. Certainly. Live and be well. <laughs> Two eggs. A bowl of water. A pinch of salt. One tablespoon of fresh chicken fat. and be well. <laughs> Finally, two cups grated matzo meal. To facilitate the grating of the matzo, we will employ the basic defense technique as demonstrated on last week's program. Uh, hey! and be well. <laughs> Finally, after combining these ingredients and rolling them in the palms, we will lower our balls into boiling water <laughs> and simmer gently for 40 minutes. And now, in the time remaining, we come to that portion of the program that we call the four questions. Each week, we take questions from our viewers and respond to four pre-selected letters. Our first letter comes from a viewer in Boston who asks, where do matzo balls come from anyway? And what is their historical significance? There are no references to balls of any kind in the sacred books. Our final three questions all come from an Evelyn Rubenstein in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, who writes, Dear rabbis, your recipes yield such generous portions of food that all too frequently I have extra. Why is this? Am I preparing too much? And what should I do with the leftovers? The answers to which we now show you in the following demonstration. Let us imagine, if you will, that Rabbi Feinberg is peacefully finishing his dinner 
and is viciously set upon by his insistent nagging wife, Mrs. Feinberg, thusly. Isaiah, you appear to be enjoying your soup. Here, have some more. Eat. More soup? Better I should drop dead before I'll have another drop of your poison, you nagging witch. <laughs> then, then take some brisket. Please, I insist. I'll just have to throw it out. Fair! Puh! I spit on your dookie brisket! <laughs> Why are you torturing me like this? Do you know what I'm, you're doing to me? Eat! Eat! Better our daughter should lie with Khomeini before I'll take another bite of your vile cooking, you repulsive, hideous, loathsome, unsightly hag! This is your decision. I'm sorry, I want you should eat. Until next time, this is Rabbi Feinberg and Rabbi Kimmelman wishing you health, security, and prosperity. Rabbi? Certainly. Live and be well.
you were someone else. Oh, shut up! All right, all right, I'm here, I'm here. Let me take a look at it. My head's me, Billy Bob. Oh, oh, my God. All right, look, it may be bad. Let me, here. Oh, hurry, do something. Right on this bullet. Let me see what I can do. Oh, I can see Mama coming. Mama! down in your backyard with his legs broken, his arms torn off, and his head nearly severed at the neck. What are you saying? I'm saying he's dead. Why didn't you say so? Any clues? Just one. With his last ounce of strength, he scrawled two words in the dirt with his nose. Yeah? Burly man. Burly man? What does that mean, burly man? Okay, settle down, boys, settle down. It's my pleasure to present to you, all the way from St. Louis, Missouri, Miss Kit Malone and Company. Come on, give a big... kid. I like your song, Miss Malone. What are you drinking? I don't drink with strangers. What's on your mind? Men, Miss Malone. Burly men. One just broke my pa's leg, tore off his arm, and down near severed his head all the way down to his neck. Maybe he asked for it. No, that ain't the kind of thing you ask somebody to do to you. <laughs> Especially if you're 98. Mind if I sit down? Suit yourself. Fight! 
He fought till he was sore. I had him dog. I had him up. I stuffed him in a drawer. He was sore when they shut the mill. Chardoff. Be sure to join us next week when the Friday's cast tackles the urban cowboy with Ken the Monster in the lead role and special guest stars The Jam. <laughs>